the words of the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, you can do better than that. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together and give him some praise. Amen. We thank the Lord for being here today. You may be seated. God is so good. We thank God for the service thus far and for the spirit of God that we have felt in this place. We were back in office uh, looking over some things and amen, it got pretty good back there and uh, we had to step out. But God is good. Amen. There's nobody like him. He's in control. And we love him on today. We thank him for the Holy Ghost that abides in our soul. Amen. Can't nobody do us like Jesus. Amen. Nobody, nobody can do us like Jesus. Amen. Some have tried a lot of things. Amen. It says if you've tried everything and everything has failed, try Jesus. Amen. It's, he, he's, he's, he's unexplainable. I can't tell you how he makes me feel. Amen. I can't explain to you the many things that he has done for me in my life. Amen. And Brother Terry has a birthday today. I want to wish him a happy birthday. And all those who have had birthdays this month, I just want you to know he said that he didn't think that he could, he would make it this far. But I remember standing on a corner of 23rd and Cleveland Avenue and I didn't think that I was going to be 25 years old. And so life was pretty reckless. But somebody was praying for me. Amen. Somebody prayed. I know my mother prayed. Amen. There's something about the prayer of a mother. Some of us are still alive today because your mother prayed for you. Don't look at me like that now. Amen. You're in your right mind because your mother prayed. And so we are grateful. We are glad. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. Jeremiah chapter number 31. Jeremiah chapter number 31. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. I'll be somewhere 
listening for my name. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, will you answer? Thank you. I will answer. When he calls me, I will end. I'll be somewhere listening for Jeremiah chapter 31. Beginning with verse number 17, reading down through verse number 20. When you have it, say amen. If you see someone that doesn't have a Bible, share your Bible or your cell phone, your device with them. Jeremiah chapter 31, beginning with verse 17. And there is hope. In the end, saith the Lord, that thy children shall come again to their own border. I have surely heard Ephraim bemoaning himself thus. Thou hast chastened me, and I was chastened as a bullock unaccustomed to the yoke. Turn thou me, and I shall be turned. For thou art the Lord my God. Surely after that I was turned, I repented. And after that I was instructed, I smote upon my thigh. I was ashamed, yea, even confounded, because I did bear the reproach of my youth. Is Ephraim my dear son? Is he a pleasant child? For since I Spake against him, I do earnestly remember him still. Help his Holy Ghost. Therefore my bowels are troubled for him. I will surely have mercy upon him, saith the Lord. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name for your grace. Even in the reading of your word that we have just read, we thank you for your abundant mercy. We pray that you would anoint the ears of the hearers that are here today. And this thy servant, speak to our hearts. Help someone make an intelligent decision today. And we will be forever careful to give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. amen. What I want you to do before you take your seat. Real quick, I want you to look at somebody. I heard somebody say that the fight was fixed. But I want you to look at someone and say to them, say, neighbor, it's an inside job. That's, that's the wrong neighbor. Turn to another neighbor and say to them, neighbor, it's an inside job. Put your hands together and give God some praise. Oh, yes, it is. My, my. My heart goes to the second chapter of St. John. Just give me a few minutes of your time today. In this second chapter of St. John, Jesus performs his first recorded miracle. It is the miracle upon which he turns the water 
into wine. His mother Mary approaches him and asks and requests to him, says that we are running out of wine and we need you to help us. Jesus says to her, woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. The word woman there is not a term of disrespect because Jesus would never disrespect his mother. But it is a respect, it is a request, and it is an answer of honor and respect. Mother, woman, what have I to do? My hour is not yet come. In other words, there's still wine here. But his mother says to the servants, because she knows that Jesus will hearken to her requests because he's a good son. He's never one time in life disobeyed her. He's never one time in his life talked back to her, never sassed her. Whenever she asked him of a thing to do, you say, yes, ma'am, and do what she would ask. So it is at this time when she makes the request and says, we are running out of wine. She then says to the servants, Whatsoever he saith, this is what I want you to do. She sends the servants to him. And Jesus tells the servants, fill the water pots with water. And we want to stop there. Servants are obedient. The servants are willing to do what is asked of them. We must understand that we are servants. We must be willing to do what the Lord says for us to do. Sometimes it's the most simple task that God is asking and requiring of us that we seem to find so difficult to do. We must be like the servants in this particular text, and that is to be willing to do what God says for us to do. If God says for us to do in the scripture, as we heard the scripture praise today from Elder Teresa, that the Bible says that we have to love one another. We should be tenderhearted and kind one toward another. Because, beloved, we are servants of the Most High God. We are not our own. We have been brought with a price. I got to get you to see that you're a servant. 
So we must be on our guard to be able to respond to the call that the master gives to us. Jesus says to the servants, fill the water pots with water. What kind of water pots are these? These are not just normal water pots, but the scripture lets us to know that these water pots were for purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins, that's about 30 gallons of water. These purifying water pots, there were six of them there, had a specific purpose. They were not for the purpose at that particular time for wine. They were for water. So that when the Jews would come to the temple, they would have to purify themselves, dip their hands in the water, and cleanse themselves so that they could be purified, if you will, before they went into the temple. And as oftentimes as they would go into the temple, they would have to purify themselves. I wish I had a water pot in here today to wash their face and to cleanse them. Whatever made them feel comfortable before going into the temple. The scripture lets us to know, and as I was laying there last night, a lot of things were running through my mind. Why were there six and not seven of them? Because seven is the number of perfection and completeness. Am I right about it? Six, on the other hand, is the number of man, dysfunction. It is one lacking of seven. And I begin to think about the dispensations of time. Stay with me here. You have innocence, you have conscience, human government, you have the promise, you have the law. The law is what gave the purifying before entering into the temple. It is what set out this decree before a person would approach and go into the temple and approach their God. But then there is a Another dispensation, which is the sixth dispensation. This is the dispensation of grace. For the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but that they should have everlasting life. These pots are dirty. These pots have had hands and uh, faces washed in them. Right. Amen. The water that has previously been set in these water pots throughout all the dispensations of time because God had to manifest himself because innocence was not sufficient. Eve sinned. They went into conscience. Conscience was not sufficient, so the flood came. 
And when the flood ended, human government came in. They decided as one people, we're going to build a tower. That ended when languages was confounded. And then came Abraham and God said, he's my friend. I'll make him a promise. Then came the law. Here comes Moses. But down through all of those years, the water in the water pot was not sufficient to cleanse men from their disease of sin. Praise the Lord. So no matter how clean or how fresh the water was, it is signifying in these six pots that they were not sufficient, but the sixth one is on the way. My brothers and sisters, Jesus says to the servants, go fill the water pots with water. And so they done as servants would do. They done as they were told. They went. We don't know how many hands have been washed in that water pots, in those water pots during this particular wedding. But we do know that the disciples, Jesus, Mary, and a few of the other guests had to have cleansed themselves. Am I right about it? Servants go. Now, no one else knows what the servants are doing or what they have been told because the guests are feeling pretty good now. But Jesus has something in store for the whole house. My brothers and sisters today, I want you to know as I have spoken to you before that the water pots were not for the wine. They were for the purifying going into the temple. Why not as I thought earlier, why not put the wine into old wine skins or the former wine skins from whence they came from? And if they didn't come from the wine skins, why not put them in the clay pots that they must have come out of? Because this new wine that Jesus is getting ready to put in the water pots, the old wine skins can't contain it. The clay pots can't contain it because the clay pots didn't last but so long they would crack and break and be disposed of so they cannot hold this new wine we cannot put new wine in old wine skins because the old wine skins will burst we cannot hold on to the law and the prophets because grace has come. We have to deal with the issues that we face today in our lives. Praise the Lord. Jesus is soon to return. It is sooner than what it was in 1960, 70, 80, or 90. And we must learn to understand that what we face today was not faced 20 years ago. We have different agendas. We have different devils. 
we have different beasts that we fight against on a daily basis. We have new types of craftiness that was not in existence. AI was not in existence 20 years ago. Computers and the technology were not in existence 30 years ago. And these are what we are up against along being all behind, excuse me, uh, the will and the plan of the devil. The Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against powers, principalities, spiritual wickedness, in high places, in rulers of the darkness of this world. Jesus says, put it in there. And when you put this water in there that was at one time used for purification, I'm going to turn that water into wine. And once and for all, it will be for real purification. I'm not going to put it in clay pots because clay pots break. I'm going to put it in stone because the stone can handle it. Fill it to the brim because God don't halfway do nothing. Wait a minute now. And because we have been filled, we should not want to halfway do nothing either. God said, fill it because when I fill you with the Holy Ghost, I'm going to completely fill you. When God comes in, and gets a hold of you, he's going to change everything about you. No, 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 no. Don't come here talking to me about uh, I still had this issue and that issue. Not when you were filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, you may have had those issues two or three days later after your flesh rose up. But when God filled you with the Holy Ghost, you became a new creation. All things were passed away and all things became new. My brothers and sisters, Jesus says, fill it all the way up. Fill it to the brim because the swine is representing the blood of Jesus Christ. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Aren't you glad today to have been filled with the Holy Ghost from the bottom to the top? They give then the wine to the governor and the rest of the guests. When the governor begins to take the wine, uh, he says, most places save, uh, they give the best of the wine early. And when men have started to feel good, then they can give them anything. But what has happened here is contrary to the way it normally goes. 
for this wine that Jesus turned that old water that was used for purifying into new wine. This was the best wine that he had had. He said instead of giving the best wine last or first, you have given the best wine last. Well, it is last because this is, my brothers and sisters, the last dispensation of cleansing. This is the last dispensation where we need our sins to be washed away. This is the last dispensation before Jesus comes back for his children. The Bible says, get your house in order before, because you shall die and not live. The Bible says that Jesus is coming as a thief in the night. Brothers and sisters, we must be prepared, not getting prepared, when Jesus comes. We find the goodness of Jesus, the first miracle of Jesus in John 2. But we can tie it together with the text that we took today. We find in our text the children of Israel have been dispersed from their homeland. But God has made a promise to them that they shall come back to their border. In other words, where you are now is not where you're going to stay. God is going to bring you back to the place of comfortableness. He's going to bring you back to the place where you can enjoy and find happiness. It is then, my brothers and sisters, that we find that Ephraim, Ephraim, Israel is called Ephraim because they're the most powerful of the 12 tribes that abode up north. So instead of Israel, he says Ephraim. Ephraim bemoans himself. Amen. Ephraim has been chastened. But Ephraim said, I got a new change of heart. Ephraim says, I was the cause of me being dispersed. I am the cause of me being in the position, carried away into captivity. I am responsible. Lord, you could have cut me off a long time ago, but you decided to keep me, and I thank you. I was like a bullock, unaccustomed to the yoke. You were trying to lead me and guide me, but like a bullock, that was bullheaded and stubborn, I wanted to go my own way. You kept on being good to me, but I kept on wanting to do it my way. Well, there even was a period of time that the Lord spoke unto Ephraim in the seventh chapter of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 7 15 lets us to know the Lord spoke and said I will cast you out of my sight 
as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Can you imagine having that prophetic word come down your owl way that God said, I'm going to cast you out. I'm going to put you away. But oh, Ephraim, when he was cast out and put away, got a hold of himself. He said, I was like a bullock. I've been stubborn. I've run from you, Lord, when you've tried to call me. I could have been dead a long time ago. You could have cut me off and never had any mercy on me at all. I don't know what you've been through individually in here. I can only tell my story. But if there is anybody that is in here today that should have been dead, sleeping in your grave, I, but God said, thou shalt not die but live, you ought to shout, thank you, Jesus. Ephraim, you should have been dead. You should have been cast out. But look at the goodness of Jesus. David understood when he said, cast me not away from thy presence. And take not thy Holy Spirit away from me. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me. Ephraim said, I smote upon my thigh and I was ashamed. In other words, Ephraim is saying, what in the world have I done? Why have I displeased a good God such as I have? He's been so good to me down through the years. How could and would I continue to upset him? I should have had myself together a long time ago. I refuse to continue uh, to do what I've been doing. No, Ephraim says, I'm going to get myself together. Turn to your neighbor and say to your neighbor, neighbor, I got to get myself together. I got to start doing the things that please God. I got to do the things as a servant and say, Lord, whatever thy will, let it be done. But fill me up, Lord. Fill me from bottom to the top. And Lord, give me strength from day to day to praise you in spite of what I'm going through. Is there anybody in here today? You know you ought to give God praise because of what he's done for you. He woke you up this morning started you on your way. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Aren't you glad about it? Aren't you glad about it? Somebody lift your voice. Say yes. Say yes. Well, Ephraim, God then says, after Ephraim has come to repentance, you see, all you got to do today is repent. 
Repentance is not only for the sinner man, woman, boy, and girl, but repentance and the cleansing, the ceremonial cleansing is for whosoever will. For whosoever will, let them come and take freely the bread of life. God said when Ephraim came to his right mind and said, I'm going to repent, God then says, well, it's not Ephraim. He's my dear son. He's a pleasant child because he then got himself together. Turn to somebody in here and say, God has been working on the inside. He been cleaning me up. He been getting me together. I've been saying yes to his will and yes to his way. I was stubborn. I was rebellious. I was hard-headed. I was a liar. I was a cheater, a backbiter. I was all those things. But when I came to myself and said, Lord, forgive me. Have mercy upon me according to your loving kindness. Blot out my transgressions. Created me clean heart. Somebody say yeah. God said Ephraim you're my dear son. Ephraim is no longer rebellious. Turn to your neighbor and say neighbor I'm getting myself together. Give somebody high five and say, neighbor, I'm getting myself together. And whatever he tells me, whatever he tells me to do is exactly what I'm going to do. If he tells me to leave my gift on the altar, find my brother or find my sister and get it right that's what I gotta do ah! say it. turn to your neighbor and say neighbor take your gift to the altar leave it there go find your brother go find your sister and get it right get it right Whatever he says do, do it because he'll work on the inside. Turn to another neighbor and say, neighbor, it's an inside job. God is getting me together. God is turning things around. God is putting joy in my soul. God has put a song in my heart. Is it real? Is it real? The Bible says it is real. Get somebody high five. Say neighbor, it's real. It's real. God is going to fix me. God going to turn me around. Don't give up on me. God will fix me. God is in control. Say yeah. Say yeah. Clap your hands. Oh, hallelujah. He's my dear son. After all that he's put you through, after all the pain and sorrow, he's my dear son. 
The Lord says, fill it up. Somebody says, fill me up, Lord. Throw your hands up. Throw your head back. Shout, fill me up. Fill me till I love everybody. Fill me till I treat everybody right. Fill me till I respond to your call. Fill me till my heart gets tender. Fill me till I say yes to your word. Yes to your will. Fill me up, Lord. Fill me with your power. Fill me with your joy. I, I need to be filled. Restore me. Revive me. Yeah. Is there anybody in here today that needs to be revived? Restored? Say Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We got to learn how to treat one another right. Yes, we do. We got to learn how. I'm not going to do it like everybody else does it. I may not do it like you do it, but it don't mean I'm wrong. Still love me. Hallelujah, say yeah. I may not look like you want me to look, but I can't help it just the way I am. But you still gotta love me. Turn to your neighbor, say neighbor, we better learn how to treat one another. Jesus is coming. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to be mad at you when he come. I don't want to have strife with you when he comes. But oh, I want to be free. 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 Shout free. Wait a minute. This is a dress rehearsal. This is a dress rehearsal. We got to get it together. To him, to her, to know if to do and do with it not. That is sin. Yeah. That's what the Bible says. Leave your gift right there. You don't know, you can have a stroke today. You're not promised tomorrow. You could have a heart attack today. Not tomorrow. It used to be here today, gone tomorrow. Is here today, gone today.
you ain't going to bother me enough. And sometimes you do. <laughs> to where I won't get it together with you. Amen. I want to be saved. Now, we either going to do this thing or we ain't going to do it. That's plain and simple. We either going to do it or we're not going to do it. It's up to you. But even Ephraim, after putting babies in the fire, Even Ephraim, after building graven images in high places, worshiping idols, even Ephraim came to himself, and God was merciful. So whatever small problem that you might have, you whistling Dixie compared to what Ephraim had done. But you still got to take care of it. It's like going to the doctor with a cold or whatever. He said, well, if you don't take care of this, it can turn into that. It can turn into that. Don't you want to stop it at the early stage? I tell you, they say one of the hardest things to say in the English language is I'm sorry. Right, right. Took a survey and said only 17% of supervisors say thanks. But the saints of God need to learn how to say I'm sorry. You talking about an explosion, an explosion of growth, an explosion of the power of God, getting on one accord with one mind. We take off. We take off. Wouldn't be no stopping us. We'd have to build a church all the way to the train tracks. Because we got everything here. We got, we got the best praise team. I'm not just saying that. I watch and I see, you know, we got the best praise team. We have wonderful services. We got good people here. Good ministry here. Musicians. Amen. The plea is the plea The plea, the plea, the plea today that the Lord is trying to make with us is to look beyond one another's faults. He said this, stand to your feet. Jesus spoke these words, as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. And he says for us after the end of that scripture, continue ye in my word. God love me, I love you, so continue Continue. 
John wrote a letter to seven churches. If I was a professor at the University of Yale, I would say to you all, write me a two-page, what would it be called? Essay. Write me a two-page essay on what the Lord would say to this church. He told Ephesus, you got to return to your first love. You're rich. You think you got this or that, but you need to buy me gold tried in the fire. He told the church of Philadelphia, it's too much idolatry going on in there. What would he say to us? Would we be the church like Sardis? that he really couldn't find nothing in and told him that you're going to have 10 days of trial. But you're going to stand the test of the trial because you've been faithful. All the other churches, all the other six churches had issues. It'd be wonderful if we had no issues. And I know we could do it. I know we could be filled to the brim. I know it. I believe in it. Every head is bowed. Father, your plea today has got to be an inside job. Help us, Lord, because flesh doesn't even want to help itself. Father, we got enough word in us down through the years. and We got enough word in us, Father, to be overcomers. And so we ask that you would help us. Help us, Father, to do what's right and pleasing in thy sight. You could come at any moment, Lord, and we want to be ready. We don't want to be left behind. So help us to love one another and to be happy with one another. And Father, we bind the spirit that will hear this and then 10 minutes later, rear up. Father, in the name of Jesus, help your people to realize you are real. You mean what you say. And let us as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that we may grow thereby. Help us in Jesus' name that when they lay me in front of this altar that my work will be complete and that you find no fault in me. Without your word, in Jesus' name, he calls you. Mm -hmm.